Welcome to uh, uh, a live case, our first man, first in man case uh, of Omniwire. We have a pretty interesting case today. Uh, this is a, a gentleman uh, with a six, 68 year old uh, male with a history of uh, coronary artery disease. He's had a bypass done in 2004 uh, where he had a lima to the LED, a vein graft to the diagonal, a vein graft to the OM, a vein graft to the PDA. He has a uh, uh, diastolic heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction. He has hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and he's had a chronic atrial fibrillation. He had cardioversion, which was which failed, but he's been on a uh, aliquis for echocardiogram. Uh, he has chronic kidney disease with a creatinine of 1.3, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, and uh, COPD. So. He had heart failure symptoms, so he's been managed with diuretics and uh, in the regular diastolic heart failure treatment. But in the past week, he's been having unstable angina. He went to an emergency room, and obviously with these COVID things, we are not doing uh, uh, elective cases, but he's sort of unstable angina, increasing frequency, uh, visits to the ER, so we brought him today uh, to uh, perform an angiogram. So I'll show you an angiogram previously. Go next slide, please. His cat from uh, 2019, in June of 2019, showed that his central memory area graph was atretic, so was not supplying the LED. Uh, he had moderate uh, LED lesion, and his vein graphs uh, to the OM diagonal and PDA were patent. Um, so he was medically managed, and now due to his recent onset uh, angina, he was brought today. And then you can see now, this is our guiding shot. We had a hard time getting the guide in because it's a bigger water. So you can see calcified arteries before we even inject. The circumflex is diffusely calcified. The vein graph shows competitive filling. And then you can see when you inject, you see a, a graft in the diagonal filling retrograde. And you see a sort of a moderate appearing narrowing. You can't see it in this cranial view, but you can see the LED is huge. There's no bypass to it. Uh, and then you can see that there is a moderate appearing lesion right after the diagonal. And diagonal itself has osteal narrowing. So because of his anginal symptoms, his LED is very, very big. We decided to do a, a pressure wire assessment. Uh, this was our suspicion from previous angiogram also. So uh, we are getting ready to set up for pressure wire. It's a pretty calcified, tortuous uh, uh, artery. So this is going to be a good test for us for uh, for the new Omniwire. Let's talk about uh, the new. You have the flush. Let's talk about the new uh, Omniwire. So you know we'll go over some presentations on uh, on the difference between the Omniwire and uh, and the uh, uh, Verata wire. But in a nutshell, this wire has been streamlined from top to bottom, just from the connector to the tip, it is different than the Verata wire. The main difference is that it is the hollow core wire from the Verata wire has been taken away by a solid core and all these conductor bands are at the periphery uh, of, the, of the wire, at the, you know, in, instead of the hollow core previously where the electrical parts were running in that core. And also with a nitinol based uh, distally, this wire is different and it pretty much looks like a workhorse wire in terms of its construction. So we want to see how it performs in this setting. And the key was the Verata wire could be used for stenting, but as soon as you did one or two exchanges on it, because of those connectors and because of the hollow tube, it is to kink and become like a spaghetti and then you lose wire position, you can't deliver. And so hopefully with the proximal construction and the near the connector and uh, the distal construction of the solid core, I think uh, hopefully this wire will perform the way we need it to perform. Also the connector is different. So what I'm gonna do now is they already handed me the packet. So it's already open. And if you can see here, I'm gonna first step I do is I flush it, which is similar to what we do previously. So we'll flush it. And uh, after we flush it, the second thing obviously is the same as uh, as before. We take, uh, yeah, it's on the other side. So we take this uh, out and then uh, hand it uh, 
to David. The connector is different than the Verata wire. Verata wire has an adapter, you could still use it. But here, if you see, they are doing the thing. I can't show you, but they are connecting that. Uh, 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 yeah, so you can see there's two tokers in here. These tokers are made of plastic. The reason why it is, and remember I told you that you had a solid core and those conductor bands run at the periphery of the wire that's embedded in there. Theoretically, if you took a toker, which is metal, or whatever it is, and you over tighten it, you could damage those and, and, and interfere with your readings of the pressure. So this is a plastic toker that comes with it. Chances of that happening is very, very low, but that's why, and then you, there is a spare one in case you needed it. So that was the first step, took it, flushed it. Second step, took it, take the wire out. And you can see this wire construction is also different. And then what I'll do now is you'll see, I just take this out. There's the third step we used to get caught before. So now this is a is a crucial step. So here you just lift this up and you can just pull it out. So if you see now what I'm doing here, in, in I made a band on it on the wire. I'm sorry if you can focus on this. It is very very simple to make a band. I always see, you know, the, you know how good a wire is because if you your artery different parts of your fingers react differently and one is more stiff than the other. How the wire hits your finger, pulp of your finger and when you are making a band is very, it's very important because it tells you how it's going to behave in the artery. And it is very easy to make a band. Compared to workhorse wire like nitinol uh, tip wires with like a BMW uh, Elite or a run-through wire, they're very difficult to make bands. But this is very, very easy, even easier than the Verata wire. So we made a band. And now what we're going to do is take it down. It's hard to cannulate the guide. So what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to normalize in the left main. Go ahead and uh, normalize it, guys. So we're going to go ahead and normalize it. Okay, perfect. So you can see that normalization is pretty good there. So we'll try to do. go ahead. We're going to give nitro now. So go and give uh, 50 and uh, 100 Shenzhen. So, you know, we're going to, we already normalized it. You know, we've been messing around for a while. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and give nitro and stuff so that we are always dilated in the epicardial vessels. And then so that we can assess uh, the true significance of the lesion and take the vasospasm and all those things out. So. So I'm going to put my introducer in and then I'm going to try to wire this thing. So you can see it's one-on-one -on -one talk. You see the difference between, see I'm, I'm in the circ or LED, I'm just talking it and it talks one-to-one -one and it goes in the LED beautifully. Most time you try to do with the pressure wire, especially when there's sharp angle and calcium, it's not going to talk like that. So it's a one-to-one -one talk really with a solid core. It's a huge difference because the talk is transmitted uh, pretty nicely. So go ahead and go cranial. So we'll go cranial now and try to get in there. Good, perfect. So you see, you can see the band on the top of the wire. And that those bands are usually very difficult to get negotiate, but it's already past the into lesion. Check that. See the band, guys. So you see my I can talk in the band. You cannot do that with regular wires. This one to one talk, 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 talk. You guys can see that, right? So I talk there and I advance. Oh, this is beautiful. It goes beautifully. Love this. So I'm in the septal, so so you see it keeps on going in the septal, but I'll just talk and advance. This wire feels beautiful up there. Okay, so I'm distal enough. So this is this is as impressive of a pressure wire I've seen. I'll tell you, I've been doing pressure wire with all different types of wires and stuff. The torque. The kink resistance, one to one, is amazing, and you guys can see now it's 0.76 IFR. Okay, so we'll try to give you a registration here 
would pull back and stuff like that. But, you know, with his bypass and stuff, it may be difficult. But go ahead and record one, guys. Let's take a picture here. Ready? So we'll take a picture here, guys. Um, so. Good. Perfect. All right. So you recorded one already, guys? Okay. Go ahead and pull back now. Yeah. So you're going to stop when you do pull back. Don't pull until you see a stable blue line. And you can see we have a stable blue line. So now we're just pulling back. And you can see this little bit of gradient in the mid portion and a big jump right there, right there. So, okay, go ahead and stop that, guys. Good. And go ahead and do co-registration. You can see, guys, If I don't know if you guys can see clearly or no, this is a whole area at the bifurcation of the diagonal and where that whole area was. So that's beautiful uh, co-registration right there. And uh, so if you go back, what I'm going to do now is, uh, is I'm going to put this wire back down again. You see, I'm just not doing I with my hand, actually. I don't even have a talker. This wire talks beautifully. So I'm happy with it so far. Uh, and uh, try to put it back down here again. Toka again, not to over tighten it too much. Just make sure the wire came back uh, the near calcium. So you see when it's near calcium, see how I'm talking? Branch, talk back, puff this. In. Branch, talk, branch, talk. Beautiful. All right, so, so far, it's as good as a workhorse wire in, in talk, one-to-one -one talk, amazing. No kinking at all. I don't see any kinking. So I'm going to take the introducer out. Then what I'm going to do now is we know it's positive and we know where it's positive. And even they have a diagonal bypass graft, it's not even doing nothing because it's markedly ischemic. So you see, this connector is also different. First of all, these wires are connected very well. This wire, obviously, you can see there's no thing. I can even try to loop it, one, nothing will happen. So you just press, okay? If you press, then it releases it. So I pressed and I take it out, okay? And when you wanna reconnect it, well, you gotta, it it's gonna catch like previously, catch the distal, there's like three, four sections. The distal one is catching. So as soon as it catches, you just release it and it connects again. So just like that. So pretty nice, just make sure it's in the middle and it connects. So reconnect it and take it off. All right, it's pretty simple. Just press, release, but make sure it's aligned in the middle. Sometimes it can go on the side too, but just make sure it catches and it's aligned in the middle. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna put this wire back in there. And now I'm gonna take this introducer out and I'm gonna show you what we see on IVIS and, uh, and we'll IVIS it and see what the lesion looks like. And it'll tell us now, IVIS wise, it'll tell us what to do. Okay. So if you see now, in the old days, it used to kink right at the TUI, right here, or the connector. So now here you can see, I'm actually gonna try to kink it. See, I'm gambling. Look here, I'm rotating it to zero right there. Just watch. Nothing is happening. It's, I am, I'm in a zero right now. And you see in the old days, it would kink. And now you can see the loop, nothing happening. It's pretty nice and clean. No kink, nothing. This is one of the biggest improvements, really. Taking all those connectors away, solid core, beautiful. All right. So now we're going to do Ivis. You got flush? That's fine. So we have a short tip. I'm gonna see how good it is to connect. So it's very easy. It's easier than before because it has a black sort of uh, marker at the uh, at the end. So it allows you to actually uh, load it very nicely too. So it's pretty nice. Shenzhen is trying to kink it, but he can't kink it. You can see the Ivis catheter coming through. It's hard to see, guys, but it's coming in the left main. So that's left main. Go ahead and uh, ring down, please. 
Perfect. So now you, we are in the left main and see how this wire is able to take it down or no. Show me. Show me. Yeah, go ahead. It's hot. So this is, I'll tell you guys. Show me the guide. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. So, so this is a pretty calcified narrowing and the IVIS is having a hard time going. But you see with this wire in the old days, this will never go with Verata. So do you see the wire got stuck? No, the thing, uh, uh, the IVIS got stuck, but in the old days, this would not even go. It's like concrete and the guide popped out. But with this little adjustment and it went beautifully. You see how the loop is, you can see I'll send it here so that we have it on there. So you see how the angle is? It goes back in a 90 degree this way. No wire really will allow you to take the IVIS because this is short tip IVIS. So I'm gonna go down a little bit more, get the true size of the artery right there. Uh, actually go down there, right down. So that's true. So go ahead and record guys and bookmark that. No, no, no. Injury. And so, so that's the true bookmark, that's the true size, okay? So that's mid LED, coming back, coming back. Little blocking in the mid LED there, uh, right there, calcium, 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 bad calcium. That's where the lesion is in its, what's happening? You good? Yeah, it's, it's stuck. It won't come back. You see, guide is getting right there. See that, guys? That's the tightest area. Oh, boy. Yeah. Bookmark that. Go ahead and send that. Good. Okay. So we don't really see the lesion. That That's where the pressure wire was here, right there. See that, how bad tight it is? It's calcium. Okay, so we'll stop here. This is uh, very impressive. The I was going through that amount of calcium and uh, and uh, and this wire taking that, so it was pretty nice. It's a pretty challenging case, really. Okay, so now I'm gonna go assess the IVIS here, guys, and we'll go from there. And then we just have to fix that whole area, I guess, huh? So measuring it here, guys, that's the mid LED. So mid LED is around three, four. Three, four. So it's about three, four in the mid LED. And then you come back, there's calcium a lot of calcium and then there's a bifurcation of the diag remember that diag that i showed you guys if you see here that's the diag right there and then right at the proximal led you come back that's a diag and the led you see this is superficial calcium right there so if you see i'm going to draw dots here this is snugged around the catheter and that's where most of the stuff was positive okay so you see, area is even less than four. It's come back, and then you see the proximal LED is about three five. So proximal LED is three five. So three four distally bad calcium where we saw the, all the dots and then coming back. Pretty impressive. We would have missed it. Actually, we would have missed this area. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and get a, I'm going to try to get a angio sculpt in here. Get me a, a, yeah, don't worry, this still is this, yeah, yeah, listen. Go ahead and get me a, a I don't even know if NG sculpt is gonna go here or no, guys. But we'll try. Uh, get a two five by fifteen NG sculpt. 
So when I try a 2515 angiosculpt over this wire, see here, this is a very challenging, very calcified, very tortuous, and now we're having some issues with, again, I was down, I was got stuck in the calcium, but now you can see the reason why it got stuck. So pretty impressive uh, wire is performing well so far. You want a challenge with the OmniWire? We got a challenge. They'll get me a 3018 NC Sapphire also, and get me a 325 by 38 uh, Zions. Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm gonna hook up and see what happens here. And see the angioscope coming out now. Oh, actually it went beautiful. <laughs> You see these guys, the angioscope went beautiful over this wire. I mean, this is called support, beautiful support. Buff there, guys. Yeah, just go ahead. Going up, angioscope. Yeah, we're gonna go very slowly here. But you see, very nice delivery of angioscope over calcified. You see how calcified it was and it actually went out very, very nicely, so. We're putting this wire to a big test here. And you can see the resistance. If I'll show you now with the Cine, you can see there's a big resistance in the middle. So go ahead and keep on going. I'm gonna go to 20, okay? Take that 3 oil balloon also. Actually, get, Dale, get me a 275. I'm gonna crack that with 275. 18 INC Sapphire. Okay, so we are at 20 atmospheres. Uh, you can see now angiosculpt really yielded it nicely. You can see there's a little waste in the middle uh, on your sink uh, vision there. So we're going to down, down. Wait for a minute and a half. And then we'll pull back a little bit more. I will go in just a little bit. Go ahead up. up. Yeah, so this is actually goes very nicely. Even the angiosculpt, the used angiosculpt, moved over this wire very nicely. So I'm pretty impressed about the support of this wire really. So we'll see, we'll see how it performs when this stand delivery and stuff. This is as tough as a case gets with a, you know, with a pressure wire and not only with the pressure wire, but a workhorse wire will have problems with balloons and stuff. So we'll, we'll try to see how it yields here. And you can see, you see the 90 degree angle this is angiosculpt over the wire and it allowed you to deliver that. This is pretty impressive. Pressure wire, Verata would never be able to do that. Yeah, go over to me. Okay, we're gonna score this and because it was very calcified and it's 3.5, I'm gonna take a 2.75 non-compliant balloon and go angioplasty up and down this area and then try to stand that. So you see, we have angiosculpt, Ivis, and now pressure, uh, a non-compliant balloon over this wire. Still nothing has happened to this wire. This is a stark difference uh, compared to the other one. So I'm gonna come up with a balloon here. And now you see it goes very nicely. Puff this and then. Go ahead up. Right up. You see how the balloon went over it like butter? That's pretty impressive. So this is a big test. We have a 38 millimeter stent through calcified arteries. See if this allows us to deliver or no. This is a true test of the wire in terms of support. It already performed pretty well with talking and durability in terms of not kinking and stuff. But in terms of support, if you want to compare this to the workhorse wire, you want to make sure that this allows you to deliver and uh, without guideliner and other stuff. So I'm gonna see 38 millimeter stent in calcifies tortuous arteries to see how it goes. And it's not going. So you see, you see that guys? Did you see how it did it? This is amazing. So it hits the calcium, but then it went, it went beautifully. So I'm gonna get this thing in here. Oh, this is impressive, guys. Okay, puff there. Puff that. Huh? 
send it that for me. Let me see it. Go ahead and fill it up. It's perfect. Where was our marker? Well, let's see where our Ivis, Ivis marker was. You guys can see it on your sync vision thing, how tortuous this area is. And uh, so it's a big, big balloon. So we'll, we'll, we'll take this out, proximally optimize with 3.5 and then take a 3.25 and crack it in the middle. Huh? What's that? Uh, what size balloon? Three five by eight. NC image. Multiple exchanges, tough balloons. Why are doing great? So then just take a quick picture. So we'll take a quick picture, make sure we didn't do anything here, guys. Looks great. So it looks very nice. Move the wire down a little bit more with my hand here. Uh, it's very nice talking wire. You see the tip is so durable. In general, if you have too many pulling, pushing, pushing, the tip becomes banged up and you can't even move it. This moves like it has lubricity on it, like it moves like butter. So very, very nice. You can see it looks beautiful on Stenbush. Uh, both the thing, you know, you can see your device detection thing. It looks like that there's an area of calcium that has not expanded. You see that, guys? Right there, proximal. So we'll go in a little bit. Pretty nice uh, device detection on here. So while we're waiting for the balloon, guys, we're going to go ahead and IVIS it just to make sure the distal edge, proximal edge looks fine. Um, and then uh, and then we'll post dilate that area. I think that area is underexpanded. You'll see it on IVIS here. I'm going to show you guys. So you see how fast Shenzhong is doing? He's trying to kink the wire, but he's not really kinking it. It's beautiful. Ring down. So that's left main, guys. We're going to ring down. And I'll take this thing. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. Record, guys. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the stand distally is okay. You see this area is a little underexpanded. Yeah, it's okay. It's actually pretty well. See, so you'll see right there, that's calcium. And that's proximal LED. The stent looks fine. It's just calcium. Let's take a post dill balloon here, guys. See if it goes. Okay. Oh, we are good. Yeah. Go ahead. Just about done, big man. Mm -hmm. 16. Okay, down. 16 for 20. Go ahead. Going up. Get down. Uh, we deform the stand. Yeah. You see that? You guys see that on device detection? We accordion the stand. You see that? The proximal edge is device detection. It tells you. It can... Get me a three balloon again, guys. Go ahead. Go. go. Uh, let me come back. One second. One second. The guide gets sucks in here. Go ahead up, yeah. Yeah. Get down. Still. 
it's okay I just take the three five and we'll put it up there right at the edge and we should be good to go yeah i think that because of the angle when we pull back the balloon the balloon is so you know messed up uh in that band that it gets pulled and the guide gets sucked in so it deformed the stand proximally which in the stand boost we can see very nicely so what we're gonna do is take another three five balloon if you guys are keeping a keeping track of how many exchanges we've done probably 20 and the wire is still the same as what it was before this is a test it's a big test for the wire in the first case and uh it's uh so far it has passed the test so we'll correct the deformation proximally guys and i think we should be good to go Perfect. Go ahead. Yeah, this is a 3.5, right? Yes. Yeah, 20 is fine. 22. 25. Get down. 25, 20. Which is IFR right now, you know. All right, guys, so we did post drill proximal optimization. Now we're going to do switch it to uh, physiology again. So this connector is good, but it has to be in the middle because there are four bars. The one that catches it, the more proximal one, and then the, the other two all have to be in the middle. If they're not in the middle, you're not going to get connection. And now you have a connection. Pretty neat. So it's pretty durable, but you have to be careful. Is that perfect? I think we're good to go. And guess what the IFR is, guys? 0.96. Okay, this is what we expected. So can you go back to the, the distal one? What is your estimate? 0.95, right? How much are you going to get? We got 0.95 and 96. This is beautiful. This is exactly what co-registration should look like. So we are done, guys. Uh, we're going to pull back, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit more with the wire here. I'm going to pull back the wire. We'll keep the wire here. I'm going to show you. Fill it up. Nice. Beautiful result. So you can see this beautiful result. See, my wire is right there. Good. So wire is right there. So I put it in an introducer tool. And once I put in an introducer tool, you want to check the durability of the tip and you see this tip is exactly what the tip was when i made it now i can switch and do whatever i want to do with it this tip has not really been damaged after all this multiple exchange so i can put it in here so this is called tip durability we talked about one-to-one -one talk which you can see here but the tip durability is key. When you want it to be workhorse, you want your tip to be maintained so that you can use it in multiple vessels. You can use it to wire multiply. If you lose wire position, you can do it. This tip durability is as good as a workhorse wire, even better than some of the ones which are nitinol, their durability is not much. And so they get, but this is as good as a workhorse wire. So that's tip durability, okay? So the wire itself is doing good. We talked about uh, exchange. We talked about uh, not kinking where you introduce. Remember, this part in the, in the proximal part, the distal is the tip. The proximal is where the connector is. So the proximal part is where you thought there was kinking. So if you see now, I'm going to do the same thing again. Uh, I'm going to open it. Wire is disconnected. Gives me the error. And then I connect it again, and it's connected again. It's beautiful. So you want to make sure it comes through the middle. But I actually, first time when I connected it, I actually put it this way. It didn't connect well. But it actually it does very well. So I, th I think this is good. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. So let me see. Now I'm going to disconnect it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kink. I'm going to loop it. And I'll make a little loop. Look at the loop. You see, if you guys can see, if you blow it up, it's a little bit more. Rotate it. 
right there. You see this loop right there? See that loop? And I'm pulling on it, 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 nothing. See this? This loop, nothing happens. And now I'm going to take it off and from the loop. Look at the wire, straight. No kinking at all. So very, very nice wire, guys. Very, very big test of the wire. The first in man test was uh, was as, as big of a test you get, but it was an, turned out to be an amazing IFR uh, co-registration case and IVIS case. So thank you very much.